All right, hello everyone, and welcome to NHRL's January New Bots event. I'm so excited to be at the desk up here with Kyle Crows and Adam Wrigley. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. This has been an amazing tournament so far. We've had some really great fights in all eight cages. And we're gonna go to three pound highlights right now. Really beautiful event here in the three pound division. Absolutely bizarre bots, a lot of explosions, a lot of new bot jitters, and a lot of just world beaters that we're seeing the beginning of their run for this year. Some great performances by control bots in all the weight classes today. Absolutely, we just saw a really great control bot right there, the big flat boy himself. Check this guy out. The entire front panel, AR, completely defending the bot, but able to lift and throw, really cool. All right, so let's check out the three pound bracket powered by True Finals. Up top, we've got Rewind and Repeater, Catalyst and Winks, Twisted Sister and Vapor Trail, Scurry Fest and Sir Spinny. So let's look at some of the best 12 pound moments earlier in the day. 12 pound bracket was by far the most competitive bracket of the day. We had flamethrowers, we had giant weapons, we had absolutely devastating robots, some of them with a little bit of experience, but most of them just brand new designs. Check this hub motor spinner out, ripping apart this nail gun bot. That's right, nail oh. gun bot. What are we doing? This is just the weirdest year and it just started. You can see hub motors were quite the theme in that weight class today, too. And in the 12 pound bracket, powered by True Finals, we have Thunderbolt and Blue Marlin at the top, Void and Battle Tots, Bumble Blitz and Energizer, Questionable Choices and Synthesis 12. Let's take a look at that 30 pound class. We've got some highlights here. That bot exploded itself. <laughs> There you see uh, Ricky's bot, Moccasin. Largest 30 I've ever seen. I mean, it looks like 125 pounds of robot, but it's not. It's within weight. Got a little, little flip. Nice little lift there, beautiful moves. And check this weird collection of strange boxy <laughs> robots. It looks like the 90s All in there. Right. I let's, don't know what happened. Kyle, let's look at the 30 pound bracket powered by True Finals. In our first fight in the 30s, we've got Bedside and Moccasin. That'll be a fun one. Budget Extinction and Crush Fist up next. Nitrous Oxide, excuse me, Nitro Oxide and Crack. And Colossal Avian versus Mr. Roper bringing up the rear. Some fun ones in this. I love that Mr. Roper has made it into the bracket. Yeah, very excited for that. On one side of the box, this green monstrosity here is from Clyde Magnuson. Now, uh, Clyde Magnuson, as you know, Adam, you know, he is a uh, vagabond, okay? From, uh, from rural Pennsylvania, he eats exclusively Chef Boyardee and SpaghettiOs, and he has built a monster. We've got Mark Rennie here running. Is this trash talking? Running, running Mr. Roper. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to say all of that hair is his own. Yeah. Okay, that's natural hair. That's tremendous. Fight, robots, fight. Oh my gosh. Here comes Clyde Magnuson with Bedside, tangling up with Tom Farkas's mini bot here in orange and yellow. <laughs> and Mr. Roper! We got some flailing. For his life. We got some flailing. Mr. Roper pushed into the corner and he's not happy about it. He is throwing a massive tantrum at him. <laughs> Clyde Magnuson, you can see the green glue is coming out. It is working. The glue is coming out, Clyde. This is awful. I feel like like Mr. Roper is a 1950s era lawyer delivering closing arguments, okay? Look at this thing. I object. I object. You can't handle the truth, okay? <laughs> You can't handle the glue. <laughs> we are going to take this to the judges. And whichever robot wins, they earned it. This was fantastic. Pure aggression coming out from Moccasin here. 
Nice lift there by Moccasin, just launching them over into the corner. You can see Moccasin stalking across the arena over at bedside. Nice throw again. Lots of little parts for... Uh-oh. <laughs> Ricky's a good sport, knocking him back onto the wheels there. Yeah, I didn't want to end the fight too early. Very kind of him. Moccasin is such an awkward robot to fight. It is so hard to drive against something just so big. It really messes with your sense of scale as a driver. Yeah, and what do you hit? I mean, everything important is up so high. There's really just nowhere to reach on that robot. Unless you want to take out a wheel or just hit that weapon directly. Yeah, Moccasin can be susceptible nice throw to there. What a toss. Pieces are falling off of something. Looks like wheels, actually, like chunks of the wheels. Mm. Doing a little dance. Nice slam from Ooh. bedside into the corner and a pin. And it does appear as though there's, oh, nope, that was something important. I believe it is one of the forks off of bedside. Just came oh, off. And a, a nice toss. flip again onto bedside. Ah, another flip. Really showing off the torque, the power of that weapon and moccasin here. It moves slower than you would see most spinning masses in this event, so you don't recognize just how yeah. powerful that thing is. You see a lot of spinners here, they're going for that kinetic energy. Moccasin is going for torque. And it looks like we are going to go to the judges. I don't know if we'll be able to get a count out within the next 12 seconds. Now, uh, Ricky, anyone with eyes probably already guessed this, but uh, I can tell you that uh, you have won that last fight, uh, which was, you know, I would say a squash match, Ricky. It, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a booger robot, and I think it got kind of squeezed and flattened and crumpled up. And no, it was, I, I really like that robot. I was really looking forward to seeing it, like, shoot goo everywhere. So I'm a little sad that didn't happen, but it had so many good hook points. Uh, it was a fun thing to kick around. Fight, robots fight. It's really difficult in this situation as a single robot to come up against the multi-bot of two similar sized robots. Of course, Battletots each is smaller than Void, but yeah. not by much. Not by much. No, Void is, so very Void small is robot. coming out and just destroying. <laughs> This is where wow. you see the weight discrepancy really come to play. <laughs> oh. Void brought to you by Trevor Summer. It is He's a veteran in this sport. He's brought about very similar to Skaripa. It's, uh, it's like basically a clone. Super powerful spinner on it. Dominant performance by Void, but they come in and flip half of Battletot's back, and they seem to have lost a they, bit of their yeah. drive when they did that. Knockout, indeed. Knock Your winner, I believe, is Void. Yeah. Wow. All right. Look at them. That hit. It, you don't up even here. see the frog in the highlights that happened so fast. <laughs> wow. Did that hit the ceiling? I think it might have. Let's see. Woo, oh, came certainly. close. Oh, boy. What a hit. No coming back from that. Whew. Let's go ahead and check in cage two for our first three pound fight of prime time, where we have Repeater and Rewind. All this. right, so Repeater are these two very identical bots uh, with repeat robotics components, hence the name Repeater. And uh, Rewind, you can see just a gorgeous claw style lifter bot. Rewind, a great control bot, been putting on a clinic in control today, but in this fight is just getting beat up by Repeater. This is yeah. a tough bot to go against for them. If you had to go against a multi-bot configuration like this with this style of robot, I mean, what would the strategy be? Would you try to focus on one? I think you gotta pick one to go after. Try to take it out as quick as possible and ignore the other. If you concentrate on both, you're just gonna freeze yourself because you're not gonna know where to go. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. You gotta disable one and then maybe be able to turn your attention to the other, but you gotta yeah. score those points on the one. Okay. Now, Repeater, the team captain of this is Ryan Liu, but you can see Peter Gardash is driving there next to him. Peter with his custom uh, sitting by the side of the box chill out style. It, there's a, so much going on. Every so often, Repeater just sends themselves flying. I was going to say, we haven't seen a lot of really high-level coordination between these bots today. They both just hit so hard that they've been able to kind of make it work. That was a little bit of sandwich action there. That was. That was nice. Yeah, beautiful oh, work there. Sending half of Repeater flying, but the other half comes in for the hit. Sam Pierce, captain of Rewind. 
no matter where Rewind goes, Repeater is there to hit them. The speed in the box right now is unbelievable. It's almost like watching this fight on fast forward. It absolutely looks that way. And there we go. Re uh, Rewind is upside down yet again. That is not how you want to end the fight, leaving an image of your robot upside down as the judges go to decide who wins. Okay. Oh, my goodness. There it is. So your winner is Repeater. No surprise. It's there. Great fight. Cage two. Let's go. Vapor Three, Trail and one, Twisted five, Sister. Robots now, fight. Twisted Sister is brought to you by Devin Wright of Wright Robotics. Ooh. It's a custom hub motor design, and it hits like a ton of bricks. Big hits right out the gate. Oh! oh. Massive end over end impact of the two bots coming off of each other. Wow. Johnny desperately trying to get himself off the wall. You can do it, Johnny, but Twisted he is being stopped. chasing him down. <laughs> Great driving here. There are bits and pieces. Wow, there are chunks flying around the arena. Is that uh, an entire weapon? Is that yes. half of a bot? That is, it looks like the weapon assembly is missing. Johnny is freaking out over there with a giant smile on his face. I mean, he's having a delightful time, but yeah, that bot doesn't have a weapon anymore. Wow. But it's still moving. It's still going. Whoa, and that's another belt that just flew back into the camera right there. It might not still be moving. <laughs> what but there a is fight. no tap out on Johnny. I love Relentless. It. He says, knock me out or count me out. I can still move. But I ain't going anywhere. It's okay. still good. It's still in this. He is still in this fight. You never know what's going to happen. He has built this like the USM Titanic. It's all compartmentalized. What? The pieces are still moving. This is outrageous. More of the robot is spilled around the arena than is still left moving around. This is Shades of the Terminator. You can just keep on shooting it. It won't oh. die until you throw it into molten lava. It's still going. <laughs> This fight's going to end with a thumbs up disappearing into the floor of the <laughs> arena. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. Now, I've never seen anything quite over. like this. You see that uh, the, the belt hanging off of uh, Vapor Trail, that very well could foul oh, up everything. Boy, it's there's a motor that here came out. Bolts. And that could be <laughs> that it. Might be that might have been the last motor. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's still spinning. <laughs> the wheels are yeah, still wheel spinning. Still spinning. Able to get traction, <laughs> that's gonna be a count out. But what a performance by Vapor Trail, Knockout. which is now maybe mostly vapor. <laughs> Amazing performance wow. by Denver Wright and Wright Robotics Twisted Sister, just Twisted beautiful, sister. hard hitting machine. Tore them apart. I, both robots can go home proud after that fight. That was an epic all-time fight. Yeah, really amazing performance from Denver. That was really cool. I got to tell you, Johnny's built a bot that can hit super hard. Maybe some, uh, some durability could be added in, but that was amazing. Well, I, have a, I have a technical judging question here. Now, if half your robot in the multi-bot uh, can no longer move, it's considered knocked out. If half of your robot comes off, <laughs> Is it considered knocked out? I, I, don't, I don't. Well, know. the other half is moving. I think but it's less, it's less than fifty percent. <laughs> but what? A, look at the weapon assembly comes out. You think the fight's over? It's not. We're just getting started. Yeah, the yard sale has just begun. <laughs> Yeah, the brooms are coming out after that one. Look at all of the debris all over that wow. arena. <laughs> it's a, does this count as arena fouling? Will there be a penalty for arena fouling? After How that? horrible would that be that you get penalized for <laughs> arena fouling because your bot disintegrated all yeah. over the arena? We would never. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So let's take out this tail of the tape with Ricky Willems and Moccasin from Baltimore, Maryland. He's got that rotary slash cam lifter, two different styles in there, 34 inches of reach, and a record of three five, and one. Four, Joey Gannon three, on Crush Fist, two, and he's got less one, reach. Five, <laughs> Not much less, five. but less. I don't think anyone else has that much reach. No, that's an absurd amount of reach. See, right out of the gate, trying to use that reach, trying to get a lift here. Oh! 
toss there from Moccasin, launching Crush Fist across the arena. Moccasin definitely with the That's early. That's a wheel. That's a wheel. Oh, That's no. That's supposed to be on the button. <laughs> that is a tap out. Ricky wow. Williams did not come to play. <laughs> he just... uh, Dominant that performance. Means Moccasin, Ricky Willems qualifies for the World Championships. They are moving on to the final. So he's so waving his hands. Call for the hit. tap out, and then a couple of hits here afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, that oh, one's crazy. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, yeah. He says, stop, stop, you stop. Know. I tapped out. Please stop. I'm here with Ricky Willems and Moccasin. Folks want to know, did you, did you build this bot just to get out of announcing today? Oh, no, that uh, announcing is much easier than, uh, than this is. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a lot of work. It really is. Uh, and everything crept up on me. There's such a higher degree of effort and preparation that goes into Norwalk now compared to Norwalk when I last competed. It's mind-blowing. And uh, it's taxing. Like, my body hurts, my brain hurts, I'm tired. Uh, that is blood, sweat, and tears I wasn't planning on. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed I'm alive going into this match. And then if it goes well, even better. I've been looking forward to this one. Five. All right, Four, so Andy Russell from three, the UK is bringing two, the drum. One, <laughs> Nitro five, oxide and colossal fight. avian from Urbana, Illinois with the hammer saw. And that drum getting up to speed, absolutely terrifying. Look at that, Big hit right hits. on the back plate of a Colossal Avian, already taking flight across the arena. Nitro Oxide, good teamwork with the second bot getting in there, preventing Colossal oh, Avian from doing anything. Nasty hit. They are really taking advantage of that back plate, it, uh, that back plate hit. And look Ooh. at that beautiful hit from Colossal Avian right on the top armor of Nitro Oxide. Nitro Oxide, though, angling for a position to get a hit while avoiding that hammer saw and landing it right there on the corner. Nicely done. Oh, wow. Came in for a second volley. This is going beautifully for him. Mobility issues already for Colossal Avian How and could Nitro you not after Oxide. Those hits? Nonstop, relentless. Beautiful top oh. attack there from Colossal Avian, but the here? weapon is not spinning. It does look like Nitro Oxide is pinned against the wall, perhaps a piece of the wedge Are under the wall. Are they stuck against the wall, or is something wrong with their drive? It no, seems like they're it, trying to wiggle. It, wiggle. It, they're wiggling. I think they might have one of their little forks stuck mm. underneath. Well, they should uh, call for an unstick before they... Uh, damage their drive trying to get out of here if they really are uh -oh. stuck. No, I don't think it's happening. There's no lights on Flo. No, yeah, they didn't. The Flo doesn't look like it's operating oh, right now. No. This is the end, ladies and gentlemen, if they are not what able to get What a way moving. to go out. Oh, so Fluffy got turned off on the first hit of this match. Wow. Wow. So on that hit that sent them flying, they turned off the bot. And that comes back to haunt them. Let's check what happened to the house bot in there. It, it, Fluffy started on, and then watch the, the weapon go down. And wow! Turns hey, guess what, folks? That's a thousand dollars. Yeah, I was about you to know. say there is a myth that if you turn off the house bot, you get a thousand dollars, and that is not a myth. I, that is a fact. I do think they should split that, but, uh, you know, there was a little bit of an assist with the toss-up. They just put them in the position. Yeah. They're the ones that turned it uh, off, though. Whew. Nitro Oxide gets a big hit, and then what are the odds that it results in turning off the house robot you're going to need oh. later? So you did, with maybe an assist, a uh, like an aerial flip and somehow turned off the house bot Tell me, tell me about what that feels like, because that happens so infrequently, and I believe it earns you a sweet thousand bucks. <laughs> I mean, feels good. Um, I, I couldn't really tell what was happening. I mean, I got thrown there. I saw the eyes like on the bot turn off. I was like, did we turn that off? But then I, mean, I had to turn my direction to or my gaze to the giant spinning drum that was pointed towards us. But yeah, I don't know. It was confusing in the moment, but I worked out. <laughs> we've got Ryan Liu on the repeater squad, the vertical spinner multibot. On the right, we've got Corey Nason's catalyst, the huge vertical spinner, spinning slightly slower, but with a much larger spinner. They're both 5-0. Oh. Five. 
We'll see, uh, you know, can can they deal with a, a multi-bot here? Can Catalyst take two at once? He's done oh, it before, there's and one. he can do it again. I will say that Booty Brigade was a multi-bot configuration, and they are... So he has no secret to taking bots apart. Oh, nice hit right. there from, the, from Repeater. Beautiful shot. That is what is so difficult about fighting Repeater. They are so fast. And those weapons hit hard. Three. <laughs> nice shot there. Oh, coming in at the wheels from Repeater. Great driving on both sides here. Corey Nason, the roofing ninja himself, really living up to that moniker in this fight. Catalyst has been flying around the box, but it is still moving. You can hear ah, the drums on Repeater. That's a huge chunk of the armor that just came off of one half of Repeater there. He's been getting hit repeatedly in that side, and it is just holding up. Yeah, that tumble that he has to take after every one of those hits, really hard to come back from. The durability of the robots left in the tournament at this point is outstanding. And these are new bots. I mean, this is crazy to see how... Oh, oh, oh no! The tap out! Catalyst wow. eats its belt, stops moving, and taps out. So Ryan and Peter celebrating, freaking out, absolutely amazing. They are now moving on into the finals. And that means they qualify for the World Championships. Wow. And a chance at the Golden Red, the biggest prize in combat robotics. Congratulations, you're qualified for the World Championship. Woo! Let's go! So, if you blinked, you missed everything in that match. Tell us what was going through your mind as you were going head-to-head -head with Corey. That was nasty. I mean, you know how hard he hits. You know if he gets in there, he's going to do damage. So, I was just sitting there. If I was not close to him, I turned the weapon down so I could drive. As soon as I was face-to-face -face with him, crank it to 100. And I, we went blade-to-blade -blade five or six times, and I won most of them. Look at some of these highlights. Wow. There are some amazing roof shots. Catalyst Under. came out strong, but Repeater was on phase, and the yeah. crowd is going wild. Yeah, and Peter is not lying. A lot of these weapon-to-weapon -weapon impacts actually went the way of the smaller bots in Repeater. Ryan Liu designed some absolute powerhouses using Peter's equipment. I absolutely love these robots. And uh, I love Ryan at the end there. You know, the bot speaks for itself. It did. I don't have <laughs> to talk. It I'm going to talk at the finals, baby. You don't have to hear anything from me. And they, they beat the odds with the, the under. Only <laughs> yeah. three ceiling shots there. Nice. Um, <laughs> impressive fight. Lived up to, to my expectations. Very exciting. I think Catalyst has a future, for sure. Um, once that stability is figured out, the floppiness goes away. Catalyst was impressive. It, it, it's been hard to fight against Repeater for anyone tonight. Yeah. They are pumped up, and they have a right to be. Twisted Sister from Denver right out of Boulder, Colorado. It's a one-part robot with two wheels, as opposed to Scurry Fest from Miles Sims Five, of Smyrna, Georgia. Four, two robots, three, some shuffling, some two, driving. One. A lot Fire of damage. Arms. Robots fight. Horizontal versus horizontal here, but of course, Scurry Fest with a lot more weight in the box. Beautiful pick there by Robert Run, getting into the side of Twisted Sister and gaining control immediately at the beginning of this fight, slamming him to the wall, getting the pin. You can hold that pin for 10 seconds, and it looks like the scurry portion of Scurry Fest coming in to get that hit as soon as the pin is over, and nicely executed strategy. Excellent job. We saw this in the last fight with Scurry Fest. Uh, that wedge robot is so effective. And here it is again, just taking advantage of Twisted Sister. Perfect driving. It is just the Crash Fest unibody without the shovel, and it is amazingly good at scooping up robots. And look at that, good teamwork between them there. And finishing off the pin with a massive hit. I mean, they have really dialed this strategy oh. in throughout the day today. Scurry Fest looked like they hit their own uh, minibot there, or second half, rather. 
but still dominant shoving around the main bot. It's incredible the hits they're able to take. I don't even see them talking while they're while they're fighting. They just know what to do. Yeah, they're feeling it. Robert knows I pin, he hits. That's the deal. We just we make it happen every time. Yeah, when you fight in a team like this, you do discuss a lot of strategy early on, but this type of teamwork is very impressive to see. You know, you look at Scurry Fest, you think that Scurry is going to be the one doing most of the fighting. That hasn't been the case. No, it's just been coming in and taking the hits as needed. Yeah. It comes in, it, it does a little hit like here, and then it backs away, it lets the wedge come in. It's, it's just, again, completely smothering. Yeah, and look at this pin, it's up against Brett. You're, it, uh, the scurry portion is actually not able to get in to get the hit there. Yeah. They're ahead on damage points at this point, right? Oh, yeah. They're doing it, they're getting the hits in, but yeah, it is almost all there Robert There you go, a little teamwork, double teaming. Wow. Just, again, wow. complete domination that for was Scurry Fest here. Miles, you didn't come all the way up from Georgia for nothing. You've earned your spot in the World Championships. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's insane. It's a, it's a two person party. It absolutely is. We worked is. together all day, and it's what we're going to do. We're just, you have to, we're. Multibot, we have to work together. The be but more we work together, it, the better the fights go. This has a weapon, of course. Curry has a weapon, but the real weapon is Robert. Like I'm in there to help uh, help him like win the fight because I I'm, I work as a good distraction to come in after he engages. But really, I'm just trying to enable Robert to do what he does best. All right. So on the Blue Marlin team, it's Bob Bellison from Port St. Lucie, Florida. Uh, they've got a vertical spinner with a solid one inch of reach. Trevor Summer from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is on the Void Squad with their vertical spinner at 200 miles per hour. Woo, 200 miles an hour. Sometimes we forget the speeds these things are spinning at. I think this is gonna make uh, some good noise once we get going. Wow, big hit out of the gate for Blue Marlin, sending Void flying. Upside down and not letting up, taking advantage of this position. Boy trying to self right cannot, and Blue Marlin is non stop on them. Boyd can't take too much more of this, they got to be careful. Boyd brought to you by Trevor oh, Summer, and it wow. is a hub spinner robot, and it hits hard, but man, it doesn't do so well when it's on its head. I think that's a great strategy for Blue Marlin to keep them <laughs> inverted as much as possible throughout keep this match. Keep your opponent upside down. Void is still going, though. This is anyone's fight. Absolutely. And there you see a great hit coming back from Void. Ooh! The sparks flying in that weapon, the weapon impact there, and you can see Void tumbling back towards the wall. Blue Marlin winning the majority of the uh, engagements here. That's going to be hard for Void to come back from. And it does look like Void is having some mobility issues, even when it is on its wheels. It tends to be backing up a lot. See, look at that. I do believe it's lost a drive side of some, of, on one of the sides. Now, if we were tracking the soccer stat battles one, I think uh, Blue Marlin would be way ahead here. Absolutely. It's just winning all of these engagements. And Void has got no answers. Yeah, Void's been doing a phenomenal job all day with these weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements, but man, Blue Marlin has just been able to take the strategic advantage. Nice side hit, pinning them up against the wall. Sometimes the geometry just doesn't work out for you. And Blue look at margin. them, there's Marlin no movement. Have it here. There's no movement, oh, and it's a tap that's out. that's a tap yeah, out. There we impressive. Go. Impressive performance wow. by Blue Marlin. Big hit, sparks flying. Little victory dance at the end there. Well, there should be. Congratulations to Blue Marlin. They are now moving on to the finals. That means they qualify for the World Championships at the end of the year and a chance to win the coveted Golden Brett. So let's check this tail of the tape. And Bumble Blitz in the pink square by Liam King of Hollywood, Maryland. He's bringing a hammer saw that spins at 170 miles per hour. He's 3-0 with Five, two KOs. Mark Lou of San three, Diego has the vertical two, spinner. One, Questionable choices, five, also at 180 fight. miles per hour. 3-0, and, oh, and this fight is going. Bumble Blitz is an overhead attack bot, and it hits hard. They have Patient out of the gate here. They've been iterating on this bot all week, and they are oh. just trying to pick their shot. 
Questionable choices having some issues with gyro there, but they're able to correct. Mini bot there, the second second half of Bumble Blitz lifting questionable choices with those cam lifters. Those are active forks that can get under and raise a robot up. But questionable choice is able to get off. You can see here there are keep away forks on the front of Bumble Blitz. That is keeping questionable choices too far away for their weapon to engage. Beautiful shot right there. Nice hit. And the forks do, by the way, put uh, questionable choices at the correct range for mm -hmm. their overhead attack weapon. Now, of course, those forks do not work when they're propped up like that. Uh, and now questionable choices getting bigger hits without that fork there to stop them. And Bubble Blitz is, is uh, on the wall here. Let's see if they can come back. Yeah, they are able to shake themselves down off the wall without calling for an unstick. Seems like both of those forks now have been ripped off, and that is really going to hurt Bumble Blitz going forwards. Questionable Choice is going after the cam lifter, taking out both wheels, and now going after the big half again. Looks like something is high centering them as well. Perhaps one of those forks underneath mm, the body of the robot. Under. Yeah. So that seems to be folded back, but still limited mobility here. Maybe the other side is still folded back. Could it's not, be. It's, it's not moving it's, well at it's all. It's not ripped off, but just folded under the robot. Hard to tell. Yeah, well, it is not looking good for Bumble Blitz right now, but as we can see, anything can happen. Ooh, nice shot directly Ooh. onto the weapon arm from Questionable Choices. Hit and it looks like after hit. You can see belts and wheels coming off here on the right side of Bumble Blitz. Ooh, yeah, that, there's a tap. That is an understandable tap out from Bumble Blitz. Your winner is going to be Questionable Choices. They have now qualified. <laughs> For the finals, they will be going on to... <laughs> Got to be careful, he's going to hurt his hand there. And by the way, that also means he qualifies for the World Championships at the end of the year. <laughs> We've got a little bit of a rumble. Okay, so not quite a rumble, just a freestyle match. We've got uh, Chainsaw Kitty... We've got Rewind, and the big wheel spinner is Jot. called Jot. Fight, robots, fight. Wow. Look at the speed from those cleat wheels. Woo. Whoa. Big hits getting tossed around. This is hectic. <laughs> I mean, just the speed out of Chainsaw Kitty is terrifying every single time. <laughs> Jot, Jot looks confused. I, I don't know what is happening. Yeah, it's, oh, it's gone boy. full melty. A robot has disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> this is brutal. Chainsaw Kitty showing the difference between a first-time robot and a seasoned competitor here. Looks like both snowman noses are off of the uh, <laughs> job there. And this is a uh, this is not you know a, a, a multi bot config here where where it's two two pound robots. This is two three pound robots going against uh, Chainsaw Kitty as a team. Yeah, Kaysaya said that she came here today to help out some friends and also get in some get in some freestyle fights with Chainsaw. And uh, I'm glad she did. This is delightful. Yeah. Well, this is some good practice, and you know we were just hearing about. Uh, you know, how much practice some of the teams are getting with their, their own private boxes. Not everyone has a private box, That's so right. these types of freestyle fights are really important to get stick time in on your robot. It is fun to play with your toy, and when you don't have many places to do that, you got to take every opportunity you get. And it is interesting to do it in, in maybe a, you know, a less, a lower stakes situation. <laughs> yeah. Have some fun with it. But man, they are not taking it easy here. No, yeah. Nobody's got anything left to lose at this point. <laughs> Ow. Well, except, Ooh. you know, parts and money. Money. And, <laughs> you know, a little pride. 
Chainsaw Kitty looks uh, unscathed, not wow. a scratch on it. Cannot say the same for the opponents. Kaisaya showed up with multiple copies of Chainsaw Kitty as well, so they're all fresh. It's really <laughs> funny. Is that where we've gotten to in the sport where you bring multiple copies just for grudge matches, freestyle <laughs> fights? You need your spare bot or you're, you're not even in the competition. It's a lot of copies that she brought too. It was like five. Well, I don't think she's gonna need them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and here's our tail of the tape with Ryan Liu from Allen, Texas with a vertical spinner. Uh, three Peter, that's two robots on the same side. Miles Sims from Smyrna, Georgia. Another two-part robot, both spinning over 200 miles per hour. Interesting difference in strategy here. You've got one robot with two identical halves, the other robot with two different halves. Whose strategy is going to Five, come out on top? Four, Scurry Fest three, has been dominant two, with that wedge, one, but against two right, opponents, two how is it going to work? Yeah, both these bots really meant to go after a single opponent. Coming out fast. There are parts flying. I can't tell who that came off of. No, me neither. But there you see the Crash Fest portion of Scurry Fest getting a nice pin at the beginning and then losing it right off the bat. Looks like that was the front armor of one of the repeaters. Yes, has it does. come off entirely. And now already getting another pin and bouncing all over the box. The wow. other half of Repeater is stuck upside down, now pinned in the corner behind the house spot. Scurry Fest has come out strong here, knocking both Repeater halves upside down, and Repeater is just Ooh. unable to come back here. Without both robots, they are struggling. Ooh, what nice hell? shot wow. there from one of the repeater halves up against Scurry Fest. The half without the front wedge is still going, flipping over its, its partner. Yeah, now both partners still in play. What a fight. Repeater coming back strong here. And Robert Run not able to land the pins that we've seen him be able to land throughout this tournament. Oh, that strategy really big failing them. Hits with Scurry Fest stuck in the wall. Able to shake themselves loose just by wiggling that weapon blade enough. Not needing to use their unstick. That could be big. Wow. And there you see this grind weapon on weapon action. Undercutter trying to cut away at the wheels of one half of Repeater. Oh, nice no. shot there, but that's half of the drive system gone off the Scurry Fest bot. Scurry Fest has hit their own wheel off of their wedge bot. Ouch. That is not going to be good. No, that is a massive portion of their strategy. They All still the seem to be controlling this fight, but that will count them. It cost them a lot in damage. There is a lot of debris all over this arena. You can what? see one half of the repeater is not moving very well. Seems like repeater is getting stuck on some of this debris that's strewn about. Now, Scurry yeah. Fest has to be careful not to knock the other wheel off their own robot. But repeater again now matchup. lost half of their robot. Back and forth this fight goes. Now all of Scurry Fest is moving, but it does look like the red half of Repeater is not, and the blue half is not making much sense right now in the box. No, they, their maneuverability is toast on both halves, unable to really get that control they've been showing all night. Scurry Fest, on the other hand, still going super strong with the larger half of their robot. Yeah, Miles really pulling out his full strategy in this one. He's not left anything up to Robert Run. Wow. The crowd counting down to the end of this fight. Woo! And that is the end of your three pound finals. This will go wow. to the judges oh. and they will decide who the first Golden Dumpster winner of 2024 is. Back and forth battle the whole time, right to the buzzer. That was a great fight. Two very different multi-bot strategies colliding in this matchup. Scurry Fest early came out very strong. And there goes the weapon, or goes the wheel. That sort of changed the fight here, but they weren't able to see a lot of capitalization from Repeater. They never got those big hits they've been sending all, all, uh, all night. No, and we really did see the Scurry portion of Scurry Fest kind of take over.
deal massive damage to the wheels and front armor packages and just keep both of those bots on their heels that entire matchup. Miles, you, Georgia Peach. Congratulations. Thank you. You are the January New Bots Golden Dumpster winner for the for the three pound division. This is awesome. Congratulations. It's amazing. It's, it's, I can't believe it. Robert, awesome, great driving today. Uh, you're probably gonna end up having 40 uh, companion bots in the World Championships as well, but that's... I'm not doing that again this year. I'm not being a multi-bot for like a kajillion different people. It was a really awesome story that you guys were telling me before. You both came into NHRL at a new bots event, and here you are at a new bots event fighting as a team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, May 2022, the first new bots event. Me and Robert um, both competed at that event. Him with Crash Fest, with me with Komodo. I ended up third. And both my losses were to uh, Robert Run here. Yeah, so we, as I said, we decided to work together so we didn't have the weaknesses. Of course, this fight is the only fight that I got de-wheeled by my partner because I decided I wanted to drive straight into his weapon. <laughs> but it is what it is. Is it because you didn't want him to take, you know, all the credit? Maybe, maybe a little. Yeah, I agree with him. <laughs> well, uh, there's only one of these to give, and Miles, it is my honor and privilege to hand you your golden dumpster for New Bots January. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you all, thank you very much. So, congratulations to Miles Sims. Enters the sport in 2022. And now, just two years later, walking away with a golden dumpster. Phenomenal. This is your 30-pound final for the day. Round of applause for these competitors. I am excited. The crowd is excited. Here we go. We are Let's in the go. mic now. Moxon slow out of the gate here, playing it up. Colossal Avian just going right into the front. Arms yeah. seems to be stuck. I think a position. lot of things are stuck on Colossal Avian uh -oh. right now. They are having mobility issues. They are having weapon issues. Not how you want to start the finals. Ooh, Moccasin having a difficult time here getting under them, getting in with the uh, the weapon. Yeah, because it's hitting that arm, and the arm's compliant, so they, they hit it. You're not getting any <laughs> lift. You're just kind of flipping it. Flipping it back. Yeah, unable to really grab anything. Just sort of shoving them around. But Colossal Avian, uh, unfortunately, not able to be very mobile. Getting a little bit here. Yeah, you know, uh, Moccasin really controlling this fight at this point. Moccasin's fight to lose. Colossal Avian got to figure out what's going wrong. Uh, <laughs> looks like they need to turn it off and on again, unfortunately. Yeah, they, they don't get a chance to power cycle now, now, a minute into the fight. Perhaps Moccasin will provide some percussive maintenance for them. <laughs> For the uninitiated, percussive maintenance is what we call it when you hit a robot just the right way and then it starts working again. You might remember your old tube television set that used to do the same thing. Always a risk when your opponent is sitting like this, you go in and tap them and they just magically come back to 100%. <laughs> um, which maybe seems to have happened here, you know? Colossal Avian back moving again. Moccasin, though, very good competitor. All evening has been uh, knocking people back onto their feet, keeping the fights going. Still just enough movement in Colossal Avian to not get them counted out. Oh, no. I feel like I can hear Colossal oh, Avian no. doing what Ricky. What are you doing, Ricky? <laughs> Ricky! He's threatened. I don't know if Ricky's going to be able to lift Come that on, much weight. For, for the record, Flo weighs like, what, 300 and something pounds? Yeah, that's a, a lot of 300. robot. That's, uh, you know, that's tough. <laughs> Colossal Avian was making noises, but it doesn't seem to be moving. No. So that means your winner at the second Golden Dumpster 2024, Ricky Willems and Moccasin. A round of applause from the crowd. Victory dance in the arena can barely spin, it's so large. <laughs> but wow, but like coming out, Moccasin looks completely not a scratch on it from the whole competition. Uh, and I think he's exceeded everyone's uh, expectations Including here. his own. Yeah. Amazing job by Ricky Willems.
you took what was it four years off how do you how do you just how do you translate that and then just come back with a really impressive bot that was so dialed in if this was not dialed in there is so far to go on this thing um, but it was also so much work the difference between taking a weekend in 2018 or 19 or whatever it was to throw something together and bring it in and be competitive and then taking basically two months to put this together and even now I'm like oh I'm, I've got, I'm a 20 percent into the workload to get this where it needs to be it's monumental like this has been a complete uh, change to my concept of a robot uh, competitor of how I relate to being a robot competitor well Ricky it is my honor and privilege as your friend and co-host to hand you your golden dumpster for new bots January congratulations is it always this heavy or am I tired? All right, let's get that tail of the tape <laughs> real quick before we get into this 12 pound final. On the Blue Marlin side, we have Bob Bellinson from Port St. Lucie, Florida. Uh, vertical spinner with a UHMW billet frame. Very cool. Uh, Mark Liu from San Diego, California brings questionable choices. Another vertical spinner. And it's mostly magnesium, but here we go. We're about to get to the countdown for the final fight of the night. The energy in here is palpable. Ending the night with a 12 pound final just goes to show you Five, how competitive this four, bracket has been three, all day two, long. One. Fight, robots fight. And we're off. Both bots tentative coming out and a Ooh. big hit by questionable choices. Is that gonna be the story here? Can Blue Mar Marlin come back and win the ground game? Nice shot there from Blue Marlin, able to get an angle on those, and gets the better of that hit. Into the short corner behind Fluffy. Ripping into the back panel on Questionable Choices, and now Questionable Choices has got to bend forwards, and they're kind of up in the air. Wow, Blue Marlin really coming back here strong after that first engagement didn't go their way. Double pin here with the, the smaller wedge bot behind Blue Marlin. Is Blue Marlin having drive issues? Looks like it, yeah, Looks that right side seems to be struggling. Seeing a little bit of crab walking from both bots here. It's been a long day, it's been a war of attrition, and these are two heavy hitters doing damage to themselves every single time they make an impact. We saw in uh, Blue Marlin's last fight, they were pretty good with the crab walking. Will they be able to use that skill here to, to come up and, and get some more hits on questionable choices? Or will the second smaller wedge robot on questionable choices come in handy here? We're seeing a high center. And this, uh, this can count for, uh, for control for the judges and allow Questionable Choice's larger Kinetic Energy Bot to come in. Ooh. Oh, and the drive, is it back? Releasing the pin. Nah, still crab walking, still struggling. This could come down to just one more hit, really setting the tone for the judges. Yeah, this is that anxiety inducing, <laughs> how will the crab walking bots make contact and what will that look like? You don't want to run away, you don't want to look like you're not being aggressive, but you want to be careful because you don't want to shove your, your wheel right into the opponent's weapon. No. Questionable choices, the lower of the two robots overall is getting high centered on the rougher floor here. Blue Marlin does seem stuck at the moment and now also getting a pin. There we go, able to shake themselves loose. But they yeah. do seem to keep getting stuck on that left side. Yeah, as the day goes on, that floor is going to get rougher and rougher and it's going to be hard for these low robots. And once you lose half the drive, again, it's, it's going to make it even tougher. Oh, this is, this is tense. You can hear the weapons spinning up to full speed, trying to get any advantage they can in this crab walking game. 30 seconds left in this matchup, in this final. Will anyone get a hit? Please. If not, <laughs> the judges are just going to have to go off that opening salvo. It's going to be hard. Uh, Blue Marlin's maneuverability seems to be getting lower and lower as the fight goes on. Yeah. Does we, seem like they're not going to get counted out at this point, yeah. but... We're gonna see both of them make it to the end, but now even Questionable Choice's uh, smaller wedge robot is not very maneuverable and is upside down. 
Will that play into the judge's decision? Oof. All, All right. right. So oh. the first 45 seconds or so is going to determine Ooh. the entirety of the 12 pound finals today. All right. Decision here we coming go. Up. All oh, right, folks. Questionable choices. Your winner and 12 pound champion. Questionable choices. Fantastic. Wow. Mark, you landed the blue marlin. Congratulations. You hooked it. And you, and you reeled it in. What's it like to be a Golden Dumpster winner here at New Bots January? Ah, uh, just speechless. It's, it was an awesome run. It was a lot of good fights. I wish the last fight was a little more exciting for everyone to watch, but still worked out. Now, there was a couple of colossal hits at the beginning of that match. What happened? So I think the first exchange, I got a really good uh, under his wedge, so I got a really good hit, and then he started to catch me. So he got behind me and hit me, and that's actually what took out one of the gearboxes. That's why I lost drive after that exchange. Now you had a fully functional weapon, but both bots were limping. Do you think that having that operational weapon is what gave you the advantage in the judge's decision? Oh, 100%. The uh, weapon working was definitely a big leg up, and as well as the mini bot and the driving of the mini bot. I, uh, I am so happy to hand this to you, Mark. Congratulations. Here is your golden dumpster. You are the new box golden dumpster winner for the 12 pound division. <laughs> I gotta tell All you, right. I'm liking that Mark kid more and more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All business. So big congratulations to the questionable choices team. Uh, Awesome. Their choices are looking less and less questionable. Every this fight. entire event. Yeah. Seems they make great choices. All right, so we have crowned three Golden Dumpster winners at this event. We have seen a bunch of weird robots, a bunch of amazing fights. We want to thank you for joining us this entire evening, for sticking this out with us, and for having such a great time. Can't wait to see you at the next event. March 2nd, we'll see you right here at the House of Havoc. Bye.